What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our coverage of Duskers, the Command Line Simulator. So you're probably saying to yourself, wait, Command Line Simulator? Yes indeed, this is actually, if I had to describe Duskers to people, I would call it a Command Line Simulator where if you took Dead Knots and you mixed it with Space Hulk and then a little bit of Uplink. So if you, imagine that you have Space Hulk but you can only move your guys around by using a command prompt and you only have direct control of one of your guys at a time while you're multitasking and typing things out for all the other guys to do, that would be this game. Essentially you are the last person alive on board a spaceship that holds a bunch of drones and you have to use your drones to salvage your way across the galaxy while avoiding, you know, Tyranids and all kinds of crazy buggy infections and weird zombie people people and things like that and so the game is actually really really fascinating at initial glance I read the description and I said so it's dead knots but I have complete control because really dead knots is a game that's very similar to this but dead knots is about dealing with the fact that you don't really have a whole lot of control over your characters because they're human you can give them orders but based on their personalities they may just ignore them and based on the situation they may have more experience than you do so they might just ignore you having less control is what dead knots is all about this game is about having complete control control the only person who has control is you and making a misstep can get all your drones destroyed which by extension means that you're going to starve aboard your space barge so without further ado let's play some duskers I'm excited about this one this is a series I've been looking forward to so let's play the game I think it's gonna generate the galaxy for us up front and there it is loading bio salvage vessel cargo class version 5.1 there's all of our control. I remember that right there. You got to do the checksums and whatnot when you turn on the computer. They still do it, but they actually hide it from you now. Back in the day, though, when you turned on a computer, you'd be like, refreshing demon and like, or Damon or whatever. Matt Damon. That's right. Inside every computer is the spirit of Matt Damon, and it must be refreshed. Initiate emergency distress sequence. Um, yes. It sends our distress signal. Come on. Vessels detected four, zero responses received. The recommended course of action initiate manual contact with vessels. Acquire necessary resources for travel. Okay, sounds good to me. I like resources. I also like traveling. Going to get to do it much, but you know, I like both. Externally modified log detected. Would you like to read it? Yes. If you're reading this, the transfer worked. Glad you're still with us. Your primary objectives are to gather intel and logs from derelict spacecraft, gather resources necessary for your own survival, and then search for survivors. If you are unable to further your objectives, initiate a reset as instructed in your training. Good luck, end of file. Log saved, save complete. So welcome to the map. I'm going to try and make this as conclusive of a, as a tutorial as possible for people that are new to the game, because this is a game that has not a considerable learning curve. But for people that didn't grow up in the era of DOS and command prompts and things like that, this game is going to seem very, very foreign. It's going to seem sort of frustrating because you're like, why do I have to type everything out? That's how everything worked back in the day when I had a computer when I was a kid. So anyways, I'm going to do my best to teach you about everything. This is the overview menu. Now, in between levels, this is where you're going to be at. If you press the one key, everything in this game is very well annotated, by the way. The keys that you press, just like in an ASCII roguelike or anything like that, they're always going to be denoted on the action that you're going to take. So if we wanted to board this ship, this little blue thing right here is our ship the Seneschal too or wait I think we're hovering over the Seneschal our ship is called what is our ship called does it have a name I think our ship has a name somewhere but I'm not seeing it right now your ship always has a name it's probably in the objectives or in the logs or something like that either way not gonna worry about it I actually boarded a ship called the your mother one time in this game it's got a bunch of like randomly generated names that are kind of humorous you can use the arrow keys in this game to move this around if you wanted to target a new location to travel to that's the way you'd want to do it you press T to travel and then you see the little number that's next to it that's how much propulsion fuel it takes to get there at the bottom of the screen you can see our propulsion fuel our jump fuel which is really really important because that's the only way that we can get to other systems and then you can also see our scrap which is sort of like our internal currency that we can use throughout the galaxy to barter and trade with random automated systems. We got the objectives list if you press O. Never actually really looked through these, in all honesty. I should probably do that during the playthrough. So the Grey Goo, given assumed advances in nanotechnology, molecular assemblers pose a definitive existential risk. Intact structures like the derelicts themselves make this seem less likely, but it's possible programming toward organic substances could explain this. A thorough scan of a vessel with a reasonable amount of organic life might turn up trace elements of nanotechnology. Scanning all rooms of a Class A or Class B space station should provide an adequate sample set. Okay, so I don't really know how that's going to help us out right now. But it wants me to scan all the rooms. I'll do the best that I can here. 
It seems also plausible that a military threat such as a weapon of mass destruction could have caused a rapid decline in the human population, which then triggered a host of other crises. Military communications could prove pertinent in supporting contradictions. I lost, I can't read anymore, oh, could in supporting or contradicting the execution of such an event. Security measures from within a military vessel could likely be less stringent. Locate a military vessel and interface with the ship's system from within to search for data that may search for this hypothesis. Okay, so that's simple enough. I actually never even realized that I had an objective, I kind of just like flew around the galaxy and explored ships. Alright, makes sense. If you press S, this is your ship config. Your ship can have two little modules you can install on it. You'll find those while you're inside of spaceships. Don't worry about it for right now, but they do all kinds of fun stuff. They Seriously, they do great things that make your life a lot easier while you're exploring. Everything that your ship can do on autopilot is something that your drones don't have to do on manual pilot, which is actually, it can result in the severe, severe reduction of, you know, actual manual functions you have to do during a given playthrough. If you press D, this is going to be your drone config. Right now we have Tommy. We got Cliff, we got Haley underneath that, the 80 out of 80, 120 out, that's their HP. We've got a motion sensor on this guy. We've got a gatherer module on there, which means he can pick stuff up. We've got a generator on this one, which means that he's essentially just a battery on wheels. We can use him to power up various systems from inside a spaceship. And then we've got Haley, who is actually probably going to be the all-star of this playthrough. You might assume that it's Tommy, since he's the one that gathers the treasure and uses the motion sensors. But actually, tow is very, very useful because it allows you to drag things around and drag them back into your ship. And then interface is super important because it allows you to connect to consoles inside of ships, which will allow you to control their internal defense systems. It'll allow you to control doors and just all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you don't start with interface, it can be a little bit lame. You probably want to buy it as soon as possible if you don't start with it. That would be my recommendation. Jump back on in right here. And so we are up and over what looks like a ship called the Seneschal 2. It's a Type C barge with zero infestations. It's been here for 16 years and it has never been visited. All right, let's board the ship. This mission is actually very, very easy, but this it serves an important function because it allows me to show you how to play the game. And so anyways, we had to press enter to board the ship if we wanted to. If you wanted to move things around with your drones right now, you could totally do that by pressing down and it'll take you to this little loadout menu. And you can remove modules and add new modules if you wanted to. We don't really have a big selection right now, so meh, we'll go with the limited selection that we have. Let's board the ship. Oh man, don't take off the motion sensor. There we go. We'll board the ship that way. Scanning. Inconclusive. Infestation types detected zero. Hull integrity is good. My name is Captain Gene Vogel. The last transmission I received was over 20 days ago, excluding automated relays. I'm overriding this log in the hopes that another survivor finds it here. It feels odd to type survivor, but I believe that's what we are. I'll be staying redacted. You're out there. I'll be broadcasting on some huge channel, Emergency Channel 1, Captain Gene Vogel. Alright, well, welcome to the ship. This is the way that you're going to interact with the game when you've got, like, your overlord view. If you wanted to see what the actual game looks like, you can toggle in between these two views with the space bar. And so it's actually completely possible to just play through this view right here if you prefer it. I prefer to kind of mix and match in between the two for precision stuff like driving my drones with the arrow keys. I like to be in this mode right here. But if I'm trying to orchestrate a ton of functions at the same time, I usually play through this one right here. So I can assume that you will more than likely, and also you can assume, you will not make an ass out of you or me if you do that you can basically assume at this point that we're gonna see both interfaces a lot so the first thing you need to know how to do is interact with doors you'll notice that every floor and every door has a little bit more information yep I'm gonna rhyme I'm gonna rhyme this entire time R1 is the designation of the room a1 is the designation of the door and it's very very simple any door that is powered will be yellow or it'll be green if it's not yellow or green you can't open I think you might be able to open blue too but blue is kind of a limited case but anyways if the door is white it means you need a module called I think pry in order to pry the door open either that or you need to find the corresponding generator in order to plug in your battery drone and then that'll activate that corridor so if you want to open a door very simple you just type the name of the door a1 BAM in the bottom right hand corner you'll see now that everything is paused by the way until you give your first command in case you were wondering about that until you give your first command eh, nothing happens and so a1 right there let's go ahead and take our first drone I know for a fact that this ship is safe so we don't really need to do anything too dangerous now on the floor right there you'll see some scrap this right here is a generator you can tell by the little lightning bolt that it has on top of it yeah and indeed I think we can open blue doors let me see no you can't open blue doors never mind I thought that you could open blue yellow 
and green, but apparently blue and white don't open that way, so never mind. Let's go check this little area real fast. And there's one thing that you're looking for on every ship you go into. It's drones. So there's a drone named Orson right there who has been destroyed. If you type in info, you would know that. So basically, with just about everything in the game, you can type in info, and it'll give you some kind of, like, whatever you're highlighting, it'll give you information on that. So this drone is named Orson. I'm going to actually make my text size a little bit larger for you guys so that you can see better. There you go. And you could do that by pressing Control plus or Control minus. You can also do F8 if you wanted to make the console larger or smaller. All of these things are listed right here. And then you can use control up and down to cycle through the last couple commands that you gave. There's a bunch of random little stuff in here. We'll learn it as we go along. Or at least I'll try to teach it to you as it becomes immediately useful. So anyways, we got a drone named Orson right here who's been destroyed. A drone that's been wiped out. There's nothing that you can do for it. And so you want to type in swap, not SWEAP. You want to type in swap and it will auto finish for you if you just want to hit enter and he's got a stun module on him what a stun module does is I think it leaves a bomb on the ground so that if an enemy comes through a room it basically shocks the entire room like a little floor bound taser makes them wet themselves and be like yee -yee 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 -yee. And you basically you give them the Chris Hansen that was always my favorite on to catch a predator when they tried to run and the police got him outside with the taser I don't know why that's so entertaining to me but every time I'm like ah <laughs> he got it with the taser so tick, 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 tick. I don't know that was my favorite thing about that show. I had an ex-girlfriend who was, like, obsessed with that show. Like, she could watch it all day, every day, and never turn it off. Now, this right here is scrap. We want that. And so we're going to type, no, not W, gather. We're going to type gather, and it'll auto-finish. He'll pick that up. Now, you can also do gather all. And so the all modifier is not something that the game brings up a whole lot, but you can use the all modifier after just about every command in the game. Like, seriously, the all modifier is really, really useful, and so you need to know about it. If you say gather all, he will gather everything that's in the room. And then while he's doing that, you could swap to another drone and work on them. And so you could use him a little bit like a little street sweeper to clean things up. Now, if we wanted to power the ship, we come over here with Cliff. We type in generator, and now he is attached. If we move him... Unfortunately, he will detach from the generator and we won't be able to power the ship anymore And so most of the time your little automated battery is just gonna sit around He's not really gonna do a whole lot Haley is by far my favorite because her drone has little kitty ears on it and That makes me super happy So what we want to do now is we want to open up d3 d5 and d2 those doors are gonna be open I did that quickly because I know for a fact this level is always the same there are no bad guys on the ship. We would also know that because it said Infestation Zero when we first jumped up on the ship. And so if you're on an Infestation Zero ship, you don't really have to worry about much. It's going to be more of a puzzle ship where you got to like work your way through and use the generators properly in order to finish. Got some scrap right there. I am fighting a hiccup so hard right now. I am doing battle with this thing. It is deep down inside my tummy bits, and it is trying to make me hiccup so bad. Oh, we got a bunch of scrap up in here. And then this is what you're looking for, the fuel access point, the FAP as it were. And so now that we found the location where the FAP has been deposited, we want to pick that up because it gives us more fuel so that we can function inside the galaxy a little bit longer. And so I'm going to say gather all right there. And while we do that, I'm going to show you guys some fun stuff. So if you wanted to move your drones automated, you go to navigate, and then you would say which drone you want to navigate, so three, and then you would say the room that you would want to go to, and check this out. He'll just go over there and he'll do his thing. Now let's assume that we are completely until, by the way, we didn't get any fuel out of the fuel point. The FAP unfortunately had nothing for us. Now let's say they don't talk about this like at all. Up at the top you'll see what they give you. Now you could tell everybody to navigate by saying one space, two space, three space, and then giving them a destination like, let's say, R5 and they will all go there. But there's an easier way to do that that I don't think the tutorial ever talked about. You can actually just go navigate all, and then you could say R1, and that'll take them all back to room number one. And so that would be how you navigate drones while other drones are doing things if you wanted to play from this menu only. And actually, I would recommend you learn to play them both. Sometimes what you're going to need is real-time skills, and sometimes what you're going to need is multitasking skills in order to succeed at this game. When we're all done, we're back inside. R1 is always this right here. You see how this is not attached to this part? This is our ship right here. It's shaped something, I don't know, it's got like a weird little prehistoric animal thing going on. I don't know. Looks a little bit like a trilobite. That's what it, it reminds me of some kind of Olanellus, except a little bit less spiky. I think you want to type A1. So the yellow doors are always the breach points where your ship has attached to the other ship. There will come missions where you have multiples of these, and you actually have control of your ship, too. You can make your ship rotate around and go to different locations to help you evac more quickly and things like that. For right now, it's not really going to be that useful. Let's also say help. 
and stun. Now the help command is something that you always want to use in this game. Whenever you get something new, you can type help and then the name of the command. The nice thing about this game is that the name of the command is typically the name of the module. They've made that pretty much one for one across the entire game. And so let's say that you get the stun gun and you don't know how to use it, you would say help stun and there you go right there. And so it says that the command stun will drop a proximity stun that detonates. I need to, let me see here. Well, I could do it this way. It doesn't really matter. A, so it is. It's a remote mine. That's what I figured it was. I don't actually use them very often. But anyways, you're going to get big drones, too, that are like battle drones. There's all kinds of crazy stuff in this game that really, it takes a while to get used to. I think this is going to be a really, really fun playthrough. I'm excited about this game. And so if you want to leave a level, if you're all nice and done, you just type in exit, and you will leave the level just like that. Nice and easy, lemon squeezy. At the end, it's going to give you a little bit of an overview. So we got four scrap. We didn't get any P fuel. We didn't get any J fuel. That's okay because I had my J fuel right before I started streaming. Right before I started vodding, whatever you want to call this. And then we also got a stun upgrade. Now you can find all kinds of useful stuff in ships. You can find modules for your ship. You can find new drones that are just incapacitated. They're not destroyed. You can bring them back and repair them. And then they can join your team and you can have different loadouts. Lots of fun stuff in this game. So I think it's going to be a blast working our way through. Back into the system. So we're in the Sitzan system. We've got the USS Apple Pie 2. Well, ain't that a friendly sounding barge. Let's go ahead and press the T key to travel on over there. That's going to cost us two of our propulsion fuel, if you were paying attention. And so we now want to board this ship. What I would like to do, actually... Eh, there's only one bad guy. There's only one infestation type on this ship, so I don't think we're going to need stun grenades right now. These are finite. These don't refill after every mission, so you can only use your motion sensor 50 times before the module burns out. You can only use the stun grenades four times before it's out. Now, you can refill that, but it's going to cost you, and if you wanted to refill that, where you're going to go is you're going to go to modifications. You're going to press M from right here, and it's going to take you to this menu right here. This menu is going to give you an overview of all of your drones, 1, 2, and 3. It's also going to give you the ability to upgrade their modules if you wanted to make them better. And so, for example, with the motion sensor, once it starts to get a little bit more ratty and tatty, when it gets down to like 25 uses, it's going to start producing errors that make it difficult for you to figure out if it's giving you a good reading or not. You would repair that through here, or you can actually add motion sensor charges through here. Just wanted to make people aware of it. Now, if you ever have a module that you don't even want, you can just convert it into scrap straight through here, too. It's a thing that is completely and totally doable at the moment. And then once you slot in all the random things that you want to do, it's going to add them to this queue, and then you're just going to press E, and it's going to work its way through iteratively. There's also ship upgrades that we could play around with, but we don't really have too many of those. You can also create new upgrades through here. I think you can find the blueprints so that you get more and more and more. I think largely right now, these are just to make sure that you don't get stuck in the game in the beginning by accidentally deleting something that you didn't mean to. So anyways, let's go ahead and board the apple pie to apple pie is one of my favorite things in the whole world. I love apple pie. I'm a big sucker for apple pie. If your Thanksgiving gathering does not have ooh, the giving gathering, I feel like the given giving gathering, ooh, you can make a tongue twister out of that. At the given giving gathering, you could then get what was got. Let's jump on. I should probably just, let's do some stuff. I do this every now and again, and I apologize for it. Let's see here. Scans are inconclusive. We know that there's an infestation on board. It appears as though that it auto-registered with a trading post and traded for pipes, on guards, or I guess it traded, it traded for some things in different systems, so this is a trade ship, more than likely, is what we could extrapolate from that info, I suppose. Let's go ahead and crack open the first door here by typing A1. Let's take Tommy on in. His new nickname is Tommy Bahama. That's his new nickname. We're going to put a flower shirt on him and everything. He can just enjoy himself. He got his Hawaiian shirt on. Go ahead. Here's a Aloha shirt. Gather a little bit of scrap from right there. And there's a power inlet on this side along with some more scrap. This ship is always the same as well. So it may seem like I'm a precog when it comes to like knowing what's coming. It's just because I've played the game a bunch of times. And so Tommy has kind of outrun his usefulness right now. Instead, what I'd like to do is I'm going to go navigate to... What's the name of this room? R2? Is this the name of the room? Is it R2? Okay, good. Usually the, the rooms are numbered in the order that you come in. And so I'm going to navigate... 1 to R3. I'm going to say Generator 2. And the reason you would say Generator 2 
this little modifier right here, you would say generator, and then you would say the number of the drone that you want to do the generator action. And so let's say that I had, because the ships in this game can get really big. By the end of the game, they're huge, where you have to, like, pan around and scan and look through them. They can have upwards of 30 or 40 rooms by the end of the game. So let's say that you have a generator bot over here, a generator bot over here, and a generator bot down here. You would want to be able to differentiate between them when cutting and giving the power back to various locations. And by the way, let's go ahead and say gather one all. He should take care of that without us having to worry about it too much. It looks like he grabbed them both with one scoop. Well, good for you, man. Look at you being a little multitasker. Tommy Bahama up in here keeping it loose. Okay, so we got two generators. The first one is locked in, but you can see here that there's obviously another room attached right here, and it's unpowered. That means we got a couple of routes. We can tap into this right here. We can sneak in that way, but what I'd like to do is let's activate the motion sensor on drone number one. And so in so doing, we now know conclusively that there is a threat inside room R5, whereas room R2 and I assume R6 are clear. I don't know if this is called R6, but it might be R6. Now what's going to happen in the future is we're going to have errors. And so what will happen is it'll be like, well, the scan of R6 was inconclusive because maybe they don't give off heat, maybe they don't give off radio waves or anything like that. There's a lot of different alien types in this game and they all kind of do different stuff. And so sometimes you're going to have to operate with limited information without ever really knowing what you're stepping in. So now that we've got him right there, how do we deal with threats? Well, there's a couple ways. We can in-cap him with stun bombs, or we can just let them move around. The nice thing about the monsters in this game is that they tend to be sort of inquisitive. Your motion detector turns off, by the way, once you move. And so let's say that I turn on the motion detector right here, and let's say that I open D8, and watch what happens. Well, maybe. I mean, it might happen. It should happen. Little bastard, move around. There he goes. And so he finally went over to investigate why the door opened. Some things are triggered by noise. Some things, it kind of depends. Like, the monsters will investigate for various reasons. Here in the early part of the game, you can just move them around by opening doors, and they'll go and investigate. And so now what we've done is we've actually pretty successfully locked him into his quarters so that now we can explore the rest of the floor. And so I know D4 doesn't have a threat. D9 doesn't have a threat now. Let's go ahead and take Tommy Bahama. We'll take a look around over here. Ah, and we've got a drone named Tweaky. Now, this drone, I don't know if I want to trust my future to a drone named Tweaky. He might have a little, I don't know, an electronic meth problem. He might like jacking on. I just watched Futurama again last week. So what we want to do with him is we actually want to bring Haley along. And so our cat-eared goddess over here, we're going to bring her up to this side. We're going to drop her in here. We're going to back up like so. We're going to type in tow. And Haley will find any towable object inside of the room that she's currently occupying. Once it's hooked up, Tweaky's going to turn blue. And we could just drag this back with us. And in fact, I can automate this. It's not even that big of a deal. And so I can say navigate 3 to R1. Oh, not 41. R1. And then I can say navigate 1 to R4. And they'll both go about their business and handle what they're supposed to be handling for right now. With Haley, we can tell her to actually... I should probably reconnect that. Let's drag him back towards the back. You can block doors in this game, and it can be a pretty big pain in the ass. So let's drag Tweaky off to the side right here so that he's not in the way, just in case anything goes wrong and we need to bug out rapidly. I've lost a playthrough that way. I left a drone kind of like catacorn to the door like this, and then I couldn't get my drones back in when I was trying to run from a monster. And it ended up in a un real unfortunate circumstance. So in this room, we found the fuel room. So this appears to be the engineering deck. We're going to go ahead and say gather all while we have Tommy highlighted. We got one day of propulsion fuel and zero jump cells. A little bit unfortunate. I would have liked to have found a jump cell in here, but what are you going to do? The next thing that we need to make happen. Now, I don't think anybody has the pry command. But what we can do for right now, I should probably move my mouse as well so that all of you aren't staring at it for half an episode. I think that I will go with D3. Let's motion scan it real quick. It looks like R6 is clear, so let's go D3. We'll start looking inside it here, and I think we're probably going to find some... There's a little bit of scrap. Okay. Everybody loves currency. A couple of extras right there. I'm going to have him gather all while we wait. And then I'm going to say navigate 2 and 3 back to R1 because we're basically done here. After giving that order, I'm going to say navigate 1 to R1. The other thing we could conceivably do is you see how there's an A2 that's yellow right here? We could have brought, let's assume that our drones for a moment were all inside this room. We could have just swung the ship around back to this side to save ourselves a couple of seconds of travel time. But 
I don't know. It didn't seem immediately useful, so I didn't do it. Let's shut down the door, give it the old exit, and we'll do our overview. Another mission successful. I don't know what this drone... Oh, this drone has a Gatling gun. So this is a combat drone. This is a drone that can actually, like, fight if it wants to. I don't have a whole lot of experience with those because the Gatling mod, I've only had it show up in one game before. The generation of items is random, by the way. The generation of items, drones, and other things like that are random, but the ship layouts are always the same. And so, the Gatling mod, I've only seen it come out once before in like 8 hours of gameplay. I almost bought it one time from a trader, but eh, you can play this game pretty peacefully if you want without ever having to shoot at anything. But where's the fun in that? My name is Splattercat, this game is called Duskers, check it out down below, definitely an interesting little title. I am a fan of unique games, and so I do try to highlight them whenever they come across my console over here at my workplace. So anyways, I will see you all later, hi do out there everybody, there will be multiple episodes of this, maybe even multiple playthroughs depending on how reception goes and how much people like it, but I like this game very much, so we're at least going to get one playthrough in. I'll see you all later, hi do everybody.